do a video completely about the very last prison that I was at, a place called Indian Creek Correctional Center in Chesapeake, Virginia. The reason why I want to do this video is because there's not very many videos about this particular prison. I feel like there should be a video about every single prison in the world, you know, so that people, so that people know. Especially if you do social media, you should certainly do a, a video about the prisons that you serve time at. And though I've talked about Indian Creek, you know, a handful of times throughout the course of time here on After Prison Show, I've never done a video completely dedicated to the facility. So here we are today. The information that I'm going to share with you comes from two different sources. One is Wikipedia on this particular prison, and another is a really interesting story that took place while I was at this prison. The Wikipedia talks quite a bit about a lot of things that took place while I was at this prison, and also interesting things that may shed light on why I talk about certain things the way that I do. It's with all of that being mentioned, what do you say we go ahead and we dive head first. Joe's trying to flex a little bit. I've been working out for the last three days, the first time in over three years, head first up into this video. The Indian Creek Correctional Center, ICC, is a Virginia Department of Corrections state prison for men. The prison is located in Chesapeake, Virginia, approximately five miles north of the North Carolina border. Uh, Indian Creek is out in the middle of freaking nowhere. Uh, there is another prison that's located right next to it called St. Brides. Heard a lot of good things about St. Brides while I was sitting at Indian Creek, uh, such as they also had game systems at that particular prison, uh, St. Brides, but you couldn't buy them off of commissary like we've heard shared lately here on After Prison Show. Patrick, a perfect example, talking about prisons in Ohio where they could buy PlayStation 1s and they could go down to the gym or, or wherever, a rec room, and play, what, PS4s and Xbox Ones? I don't know what game systems they had at St. Bride's. I can't remember. And to me, it was just an urban legend and a, and a prison myth because I was never there to experience them. But I heard that that's what they had there. And again, Indian Creek, just like St. Bride's, they both sit right next to each other out in the middle of nowhere. I've also mentioned another urban legend about Indian Creek. When I got there, I remember prisoners talking about the website for Indian Creek Correctional Center, a therapeutic community and program. And supposedly on this website, they had like, they offered things such as like horseback riding. They tried to make it seem, at least how it was being explained to me, like some sort of a tranquil place tranquil place where you could go serve time at almost like a, a resort style rehab but it's a prison i never was able to find the website showcasing the horseback riding that was allegedly listed there but while i was at the prison you would see people on the outside in the free world riding by on horses you ever seen a dude in prison behind a, a razor wire fence trying to holler at a girl riding by on horseback? Hey, yo, hey, go, hey, hey, shorty, hey, let me take you to Brokeback Mountain for real, though. Wait a minute, that doesn't even make any damn sense. Brokeback Mountain's what was taking place on the inside. Yeah, man, dudes was trying to holler at girls riding by on freaking horses, man. We were in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but much as like most prisons everywhere, you know, it's a reason why these prisons are in the middle of nowhere. Just in case you try to escape, it's going to be a, it's going to be pretty hard for you to get anywhere and possibly easier for them to apprehend you. And a lot of prisoners dealing with the, uh, the survival tactics, preparing for the end of days, preppers, you know, doomsday preppers and whatnot. The facility opened in 1994 and specializes in long-term treatment of incarcerated substance abusers. It wasn't just for that, though. You did have people who were going there who were sentenced to Indian Creek Therapeutic Community because of addiction problems. You know, they considered going to Indian Creek an alternative sentencing when you go to court because to complete the program, if you were sentenced... To Indian Creek, the behavioral, I can't remember exactly how they worded the, the program for Indian Creek, behavioral treatment 
program, possibly. But if you were sentenced to that, it was kind of a scary thing to be sentenced to. And you could be sentenced to this because of addiction problems, because of anger and attitude problems, and because of being a, a young offender who was just starting to get into trouble. Those were the three reasons why you would be sentenced to this alternative type of prison sentence. And again, kind of a scary thing to be sentenced to because when you go there, you got to complete the program. Now, I don't know anybody who stayed at this program for like five or more years trying to complete this program. I think that the average time to complete the program was around two and a half to three years. And I think it was even rumored that you could complete the program maybe in as early as like two years, possibly 18 months, though I doubt that was ever going to happen. But it was around two and a half years to complete the program. The crazy thing about it is, is dudes who would get sentenced to this, I got to imagine in the courtroom, they're all about this. They could be facing 5, 10, 15. I even heard of dudes facing like 40 something years getting sentenced to this alternative sentence for the umpteenth time. In the courtroom, this shit sounds great. But when you get there, and you were young and you were out of control and involved in the gangs like a lot of these dudes you know claim to be it was not an easy program for them to complete and oftentimes they would end up tricking up the program jacking up their level getting booted from the program and if you got booted from the program you know your the 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 option to go through this was voided out and you were in turn left with whatever you were initially sentenced to we're going to sentence you to 40 years but we're going to suspend that so long as you complete the behavioral modification therapeutic program, however they called this thing. I share that with you because I know of guys who got sentenced to this and ended up tricking this up and going to a higher level, a three or a four, and ended up getting, you know, an ass load of time, allegedly. That's what I heard. I don't I don't know necessarily how it all played out for them. But it was certainly a scary thing to think about. You know, me ending up at this prison. I ended up at this prison, I, I like to believe, for two reasons. One, I was getting closer toward the end of my sentence, sentenced to seven years, seven and a half years, I believe. And I had about two and a half years left. So I was getting close to the time to go to reentry anyways. And I was at Haynesville, another level two, uh, Indian Creek Correctional Center. That's a level two medium custody prison in the state of Virginia. I was at another level two getting in all sorts of trouble for the tattooing. I would end up tricking up my time, getting caught time and time again. I ended up leaving from the hole at Haynesville, getting shipped to Indian Creek. And I'll never forget that for as long as I live. On the day that they came and told me I was getting transferred to Indian Creek, I wanted to cry because I ain't heard nothing good about this place. All I heard were these myths. You couldn't even have coffee here, allegedly. No sodas that you could purchase off of commissary. They don't even got cable. I'm out of prison with 80-something channels. I wanted to cry. And it's ironic that I wanted to cry because as the guard was coming by the cells back in the hole, telling the prisoners that they were leaving tomorrow getting transferred, they told me I was getting transferred going to Indian Creek. I wanted to cry about that. They told the next guy beside me that he was getting transferred to Sussex, which is a level four or five. And he legitimately started crying about that. <laughs> man, what you mean? I'm going to Sussex. Sussex. Man, that's a real penitentiary. Considering where we were at the time, Haynesville, a walk in the park type of a prison, just a, a lowly little level two. Yeah, I did not want to go to Indian Creek. But that's where I would wrap my sentence up from. The medium security facility houses inmates in a dormitory style quarters split into six housing units. That's right. There's six buildings there. Seven, if you include the SHU, special housing unit, uh, which is for either checking in or for getting in trouble. But you've got the one, two, three side that's on one side of the compound, the four, five, six side, which is on the other side of the compound. Six building was reserved for prisoners getting ready to go home. One building was intake, all of the prisoners just coming to the prison. Four building, I believe, or maybe it was five, was the veterans dorm, one side of one of those buildings, because each building had an A and B side. I spent most of my time at Indian Creek in 3B. 
uh, three building. And then I would end up going to six building when I was getting ready to get released. But dormitory style. I believe each dorm housed something close to 100 prisoners. And maybe it was a little bit less than that. Because you got to understand the way that these dorms are set up. And I want to explain this to you. It's very important. When you walk into this big warehouse that houses people, you had bunks that lined each side of the housing unit. Uh, the left side and the right side. And those were, you know, a top bunk and a bottom bunk. But in the middle, you did have those double bunks as well. But then they got rid of the double bunk in the middle. And it was only a single bunk, if I can remember correctly. I'm getting a little bit of confuse, confusing memories trying to rem remember this. But I remember that while I was there, they were getting rid of the top bunk in the middle. So you had... A bunk bed on the far wall, a bunk bed on the opposite wall, and then in the middle you had two rows of single bunks. They eventually went to that, and I believe one of the reasons, allegedly, another prison myth and urban legend here, was that a prisoner was assaulted in the back corner of one of these housing units at one of these level two prisons in the state of Virginia. I don't know if it was at Indian Creek, but you've got Indian Creek, St. Bride's, Haynesville, Coffeewood, Dillwyn, Deerfield, I think. I know you've got at least those five, and there's probably one or two other ones, maybe there is, or maybe there's only the five, that look exactly the same. Indian Creek looks exactly like Dillwyn and Coffeewood, and maybe it was Deerfield. I, I can't remember, but... A majority of the level twos in the state of Virginia all look the same. So I can't remember if it was at Indian Creek where this assault took place. But allegedly, there was an assault that took place, the worst kind, I mean, in the back corner of one of these housing units. And that was why they were getting rid of the top bunk in the middle of the housing units across the state. So that the guard sitting in the guard booth had a better view throughout the housing unit and not having that top bunk in the middle row blocking their view to the back. In June 2008, the prison had an average daily population of 1,002 inmates. I think they've got less there now, especially given the fact that they got rid of those middle bunks, those top middle bunks. The ICCC is adjacent to Virginia DOC's St. Bride's Correctional Center, which houses inmates not requiring specialized treatment for substance abuse. So they give the history, and I'm a little biased to this because I'm actually mentioned in the history, quite an honor, actually. Uh, but they say in 2014, April, reports of an inmate being medically neglected were picked up by local media. One allegation described the inmate as being misdiagnosed with kidney stones by medical staff. I was at Indian Creek when this took place. This was in 2014. Over the course of three months, that inmate lost approximately 50 pounds and was later discovered through delayed testing to have terminal pancreatic cancer. Another inmate was alleged to have reported heart attack symptoms to medical staff and was treated with Advil. How many times have I made jokes about going to prison medical and them not doing a damn thing for you and only giving you Tylenol? Because when I was in prison, this was exactly the type of stuff that was taking place. That inmate allegedly died that night of a heart attack. On November 8th, 2014, inmate Dion Kamar Longmire, 19 years old, I was there when this took place, took his life while in solitary confinement at Indian Creek Correctional Center. I'll never forget this. I've shared about this here on After Prison Show. This actually became a lawsuit and his family got paid. That's part of what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. Uh, this guy Longmire was a young guy who was getting in a lot of trouble while at the prison. I think he was sentenced to this. And he ended up going to the hole for stealing the commissary of another prisoner. Um, they ran the cameras back. They saw that it was him that stole the commissary. Everybody was out on the rec yard when this took place. And I remember them coming out onto the rec yard and putting cuffs on this kid Longmire and escorting him out of the wreck area into the hole well it wasn't long after that i heard that this guy took his life 
the story that I heard in relation to this was while back in the hole, there was a female guard who was a Jekyll and Hyde. One day she's cool, the next day she's not. And when you've got a female who some guys may think is relatively attractive, I didn't think she was attractive at all, but some guys thought that this chick was somewhat attractive. When you've got a chick who's being cool with you one day and then is the complete opposite the next day, that can be very dangerous. you got to imagine that there's prisoners probably trying to go on prison dates, looking at or thinking about this particular guard, uh, you know, getting butt ball naked in front of her back in the hole. And I'm not sure that that's what this kid Longmire was doing, but I'm just trying to paint the picture of how dangerous a situation like this can be when you've got a guard who is a Jekyll and Hyde. Cool one day, not cool the next day. And look, let's be honest, no guard's really going to be cool with, I mean, some may be, but the majority are not going to be cool with, you know, you uh, greasing yourself up butt ball naked, you know, behind the confines of a swinging door, uh, behind the gun line boss, so to speak, getting money. Uh, most guards are not going to be cool with that. Short of it is, the guard who was working back in isolation, back in the hole, was this particular guard. So allegedly, the way the story went, um, something about the kid slammed the cell door or kicked open the cell door and the guard's fingers were caught in the door some kind of a way and maybe it broke her fingers or injured her hand. I can't remember exactly what happened. I know that the guard was allegedly injured, something in relation to the, the cell door, something in relation to uh, this kid and her hand. There were rumors that, you know, the guard was telling him, you're about to get a street charge. You're going to get even more time. This is assault on a correctional officer. You know, they scared him really bad with these threats of what was going to happen to him. And then he ended up taking his life back there. That was the story that I heard, but there was a lot more to the story as, you know, mentioned here on this Wikipedia. A lawsuit was filed by Longmire's mother against the Virginia DOC and the prison and stated that he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, depression, ADHD, and anxiety before his incarceration in May of 2014. Damn, he was just getting locked up too. Uh, when he did this. That's really sad. The lawsuit alleges VA DOC did not provide Longmire with medication for his conditions, which he had been taken prior to imprisonment. The suit further alleges prison staff failed to take precautionary measures for an inmate with a history of mental illness, such as placing Longmire on 24-hour watch, basically or removing bedding and other objects that could be used to injure himself. Longmire had been held in solitary confinement as a punitive measure for misconduct from October 5th, 2014 until his death 34 days later. Uh, the other story that I was going to share, which I'm not going to share it because we've already shared enough about it with that information, was about this lawsuit that was filed by this kid's mother. And do you know, she actually got paid from this. She didn't get very much, uh, but she got $100,000 for this wrongful death settlement that took place while her son was at Indian Creek. Switching gears entirely, uh, and the next paragraph goes on to talk about me, yours truly. In October of 2015, YouTube personality Joseph Guerrero was released from Indian Creek at the end of a seven-year sentence. He now hosts the after-prison show stylized as one word. I appreciate the clarification on that. That's pretty cool. I don't know if that's like resume worthy or, or LinkedIn worthy right there, but I, I, I think that that's pretty cool right there. I wonder, and you know, without making this like an ego thing, please don't take this that way, but I wonder if my name rings bells in prison. I mean, in Indian Creek especially. You know, I wonder if they talk about me, if I'm a, you know, a topic, or maybe there's like a mural painted of me, like a shrine. I'm kidding about that part. But, you know, who knows? I've never had an opportunity to go to any prisons or any facilities and speak at all. And I would imagine that if I was ever able to do that, 
Well, Indian Creek would certainly be one that would probably be the most possible for me to do, but you never know. Uh, that would be cool to do. I know that Banky does that a lot. A lot of the guys that Banky has introduced do that a lot. Why not me? And, you know, as I think about that, the, the simple answer is probably nobody even takes me freaking serious anymore. Shit, let it have been 2017, though, when After Prison Show was at the height and peak of its success. Oh, I probably could have got any doors opened in any prisons that I probably wanted. In May of 2016, this was after I was released, but I remember this story vividly because it made the news. Nine inmates suspected of using scheduled narcotics were hospitalized with overdose symptoms. Uh, Crazy. I just did a video talking about that K2 and that spice and that salvia, and I'm pretty sure that that's what this was. Oh, never mind. I'm wrong. Uh, One of the inmates tested positive for opioid. Well... Still, the K2, the Spice, the Salvia, that was a a big thing that was taking place in that prison during the time that I was there, and it's probably still taking place in there to this very day. The opioids as well through the Suboxone strips, and God only knows what else. I'll share something with you that I'll never forget about Indian Creek. You know, when I first got there, there was this big dude that worked out all the time. You know, you couldn't even tell. The type of dudes that that got high and got high like that. But this dude worked out all the time. Big dude. And I'll never forget, you know, we were sitting in a group one day. And this dude literally just passed out in the middle of the group with a freaking needle in his arm. Like literally was shooting dope at a (laughs) therapeutic rehab style prison to some degree uh i had just got there and i'm like yo this is crazy all those rumors that i had heard about no coffee and no soda you could get coffee and soda there i want to say that maybe at one point in time like when they first opened back in 1994 possibly you couldn't but maybe they had laxed up on it a little bit since then You know, I had heard a lot of rumors about back during the time when this place was way more stringent, you know, especially considering not being able to get sodas and coffee, that the guards were uh, engaging in the nefarious activities for money orders. I heard that that was something that was really, Pound Town was taking place big time at Indian Creek, allegedly back when this place first opened up. And and you know, it's funny that I I mentioned that because while I was there, it was definitely still taking place. Maybe not so much with the guards, but with the staff, with them young little counselors that was coming in there. Shit, I saw so many young ladies walked off of that compound because of engaging in relationships, one form, fashion, or another with prisoners. You know, Indian Creek, man, that was a crazy place to do time at, to think that it's a drug place and a a behavioral place and a a therapeutic community. The drugs were heavy there, and as they probably should be. If you've got a bunch of guys there who are dealing with addiction problems, it's no stretch to think they're going to be the ones trying to get the drugs in the most. But there was a lot of wild stuff that took place and probably still does take place at Indian Creek. Yeah. Just wanted to do a video and specifically talk about that last prison that I've wrapped up the last two and a half years of my seven-year incarceration at. You know, they tried. Uh, I, I don't want this video to paint a black eye on this institution because it is what it is. It's a prison, for God's sakes. Uh, you know, they definitely tried and still try to do the most that they can to rehabilitate and re entry guys getting ready to get released. They try with the programming. They try with the counselors. They try as much as they possibly can. But unfortunately, it's a place that most guys, when they get there, they don't want to be there. And it's like after prison show as a whole, thinking about all the many times that we've tried to help people and that's never worked. Think of the the prison, Indian Creek, is just the bigger version of that. How are you going to change somebody or make them change if they're not ready to change for themselves? Kudos to that place for trying to do all that they can. While I was there, 
You know, my time wasn't even that bad. I had a great prison job. I was a mural painter there. I see that that's still taking place through the few images that I see floating around of Indian Creek since my release. You know, it wasn't a bad place to do time at, even though I had heard so many horrible things about it prior to getting there. I'm going to wrap it up on that note. Hey, I hope that this was a video you guys enjoyed. And if it was, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace!